I had the opportunity to sit down with Professor David Zilberman, who has been a professor at UC Berkeley for over 30 years and holds the Robinson Chair in the Department of Agricultural and Resource Economics at Berkeley. We are talking about the Green Revolution coming to Africa, while faced with climate change and the largest youthful population in the world. What path do you think Africa will take to achieve the Green Revolution? Uh, considering the various options uh, on the table, on one side we have agroecology or organic farming versus industrial agriculture or GM run uh, practices. It's not either or. I think you have to take the advantage of all. It is, I, I think it's a really it's a false dichotomy. You can use good ecology with modern input. You don't need to have mega farms. Small farms can use take advantage of an economic of scale. Most of the car farmers in California are relatively small. So it's not eager or organic um, GMO can work for small farmers. It works for small farmers in South Africa. So the key element find the best combination rather than to stick to one or the other. Organic farming works very well when you have good soil, when you have available water and when you have good human capital. Now, it works in California. Why? In California, we have a desert, we get water from the mountain, we don't have pests, so we, and we have very sophisticated farming. So we have good organic agriculture, but even here, here the yields are not there. But when you have pests, when you have bad soil, then organic farmers farming is, is really bad. It's not me. Pedro Sanchez, the, one of the biggest soil scientists in the world, is convinced that organic farming is not for Africa. Africa has depleted soil. It's not the GMO. Africa needs fertilizer to renew the soil. Africa need a lot, don't, don't have the livestock to provide fertilizer. And if you want to provide fertilizer for organic system, you need to feed cows. What do you prefer, to feed cows or to feed uh, humans? Africa need, or the organic ecological system are nice. Ecology is very important, but you need to have ecology with pesticide, with fertilizer, with GMOs. You don't need to have ecology by itself. To me, the people that pay for ecology are rich people. And you may have a subset of people in Africa that can afford it. But for the masses in Africa, they really don't need it. I don't think that ecological, the, the ecological agriculture is better in any way than traditional agriculture. Scientists are learning all the time. A lot of the method of organic farming and ecological agriculture are derived by researchers that have traditional breeding. In medicine, we use GA medicine. In medicine, we use the best systems. Why would African will take the system that haven't been working there, organic farming, that by default have been the African farming, and preserve it? To me, this is cynical, basically cynical uh, approach to tell people to do things that are not good for them. Now, you have to be reasonable. You, you, you cannot recommend inputs that are very expensive. You, don't, you cannot recommend, you have to develop systems that adapt to the people. But developing uh, new varieties with genetic engineering and develop or not or other system and using fertilizer is really essential. Fertilizer are essential for Africa. And you can see what happened in Malawi when they start using fertilizer. So all this organic stuff is good for Berkeley and you want to be cool and you want to impress a lot of graduate students that you are cool and politically correct. But believe me, they basically treat you like a fool when you basically repeat all this nonsense. So the, the, my views are very strong about this stuff. You basically have to think about what good for Africa. In America, we use fertilizer. In Europe, we use pesticide. We use all this stuff. Nothing happened to us. All the complaints of the... I, I, I'm, I'm an environmentalist, and I can understand that there are abuses and we need to have regulation. But modern-based agriculture allows us to have seven or nine billion people. Organic farming cannot, cannot feed more than four or five billion people. If we, fire, if we feed five billion people, who are the people that will be left behind? It won't be the American or European or the environmentalists. It will be the African. So to me, 
not giving up to this stuff is survival because you will be the Africa, the poor African will be the people that will suffer from it. Why is a green revolution necessary in Africa today? I don't understand why in Kenya they don't allow GM. A lot of the GM issue is a European uh, problem. The, for whatever reason, Europe has problem with GM. I think because GM is an American technology. But African countries won't have to pay a lot of intellectual property, if at all, and they should take advantage of it. Because the moment that you start using GM, it will be a way to accelerate introduction of new varieties and accelerate adaptation to climate change. When you adapt to climate change, you need all the tools you have to develop new varieties that can deal with the new weather. And the moment that in Africa you develop a legal system that uh, can adapt to climate change, both African scientists and the international system can do it. Uh, why do you think uh, Barclay breeds excellence? And you're the founder of the MDP program, which is set to create the next new leaders in the development world. Uh, tell us the secrets of how you've been able to, to create excellence here. I think the key in a university or in any system is that people are evaluated by their merits. Because first, university has autonomy. They don't belong to the government. They, are run by independent uh, organizations that run the university, and they are very competitive, they want to be the best. So universities that want to be the best, they evaluate their faculty by performance. They evaluate them by papers they write, by publication, students. Basically, no one is evaluated based on his background. Look how many professors you have in Berkeley that are from India, from China. We don't have, unfortunately, many people from Africa, but we are from all over the world. I'm from Israel. I, no one cares who you are as long as you publish. It's basically, it's merit-based. Now, universities in the United States that are merit-based are better than universities that are not merit-based. In Berkeley, every three years you are evaluated. You didn't publish, you don't get a promotion. You're also evaluated by your teaching. I think we can evaluate teaching even uh, better. Number two is, when we look at students, the only thing we matter is qualification. There may be some biases in theory, I don't know. There may be some biases in the system. But altogether, we try to get students that will perform. And if you have a good student, we will even support you, especially at the PhD. The PhD almost everyone is supported. And most of the PhD students are not from uh, upper-class America. They are from all over the world. We have people from China, India, Africa, wherever. So I think the key element at universities is that it's merit-based.